Hello everyone, Mr. Science Mover here, and this is going to be sort of a tie between ripping mods and changing textures in Back for Blood. So if you watched the last video, I went through how to change the textures of models in Back for Blood, but a lot of that is just drawing on a flat TGA file. So what we're going to actually do now is open up the models so that we can properly change the textures on those models. So you can see I have a new zip file called ActorX Importer. The ActorX is the file format that you model exports models in. So we're going to unzip this folder and I will have this linked in the description. So you're going to extract this. And we'll see that we have two .ms files. So these are both scripts for 3ds Max. Unfortunately, the script only works in 3ds Max. Personally, I'm a Blender person myself with some experience in Maya, but these scripts don't work in either of those. So you're going to have to have 3ds Max if you want to extract models from the game. So we're going to go ahead and close this down for now. And we're going to open up 3ds Max. So now that 3ds Max is open, what we're going to want to do is head straight to the scripting tab at the top. And we're going to run script. Now for me, I have the actor X importer stored in the 3ds Max scripts folder. But what you can also do is head to where your files are actually stored. So for me, they're stored in this path. So I'm going to head there in this window, which is actually kind of annoying that it doesn't just let you paste. But here's our ActorX importer. We're going to open the ActorX importer right there and open that. And you'll see a pop-up window for importing ActorXs. What we're going to want for this tutorial right now is we're going to only import a mesh. So we're going to import S a PSK. We're going to go to where we have our shotgun extracted from the last episode. We have our mesh here and you can see this is our PSK file that we're going to be opening. So we're going to import that and you should see your shotgun appear in the scene. So now we've got our shotgun. There is a little bit of weird stuff going on with the skeleton, but we're only worried about the model itself right now. So don't worry about the skeleton next to it. So we're going to select our skeleton and delete that from the scene because we don't want the skeleton to be in the scene right now. Uh, this is the skeleton that the gun will use for firing. but since we don't want any of that right now, we can go ahead and delete it. I'm sure there is a better way to open these. Here, so we can control click on the arrow to open up all of the bones. And we're going to delete all of those. So now we just have our gun without the skeleton. And what we're going to do is we're going to export this in a way that we can use it in another program. Uh, so we're going to head to export as FBX and we'll call this shotgun. And we'll put it in again in our Exported shotgun. Let's put it in the meshes folder right next to the other one. Just go ahead and hit OK. So now we have that exported. We're going to again need to go into another software called Substance Painter. So now that we have Substance Painter open, we're going to go ahead and drag our shotgun FBX into the working window 
and we can just go ahead and hit open. Okay. And our shotgun will pop up on the left and the corresponding UV map will be on the right. So in substance, we can do some simple things like draw on our texture directly, or we can use pre-made materials. So we can use something like brass to make the receiver look like brass. Uh, or we can use some smart materials, which adds a bit more depth to the materials. So let's say we want it to look like steel. There you go. So you can see there's a bunch of scratches there. We'll make our stock a different kind of steel. That one's a bit more shiny. And we'll make the barrel something funky. Let's make it... A nice sapphire color. Sapphire corundum. So here's our new shotgun. You can see we have the three parts and the three textures. Let's just slap something onto the shotgun shell. A nice red color. That's fine. And we're going to have to export these textures in the same format that Back for Blood uses. So we're going to go into File export textures and here is where we're going to have to select the proper output template so for me i've already created a back for blood template but for you you can go ahead and hit this plus which will add a new preset we're going to name it back for blood i'll just name mine for e since i already have a back for blood uh, we're going to add an RGB for the base color. We're going to add an RGB for the normal and an R plus G plus B for the PBR. So one thing that Back for Blood does with its textures is it combines all of the extra PBR data into one map. Since those are actually only one channel's worth of data, you can actually store all of them inside a single RGB texture. So we're going to add RGB, then another RGB, and R plus G plus B. Uh, and you can name these really whatever you want, but what I do is I use one of these templates and the texture set variable so that it's already exported in a name that we can recognize. So we're going to make the first one. It's going to be dollar sign texture set, which gives us the actual name of the texture set of the model we're using. And then underscore BC underscore T. And then this is for the extension. And as for that extension, we're going to set all of these to be TGA. And we're going to go ahead and make the next one that same thing but with an N instead of BC, and we can make the last one DBR. Oh, why is this one? There we go. DBR. Oops. So now we have to fill out what these, these variables actually point to. So for the base color, that's going to be our base color right here. So we can go ahead and drag that onto that and hit RGB channels. For our normal, we're actually going to not use this normal, but we're going to use this normal OpenGL and hit RGB channels. And then here, don't know why this keeps resetting itself. We're going to set the B to be metallic. And you can see there's only a gray channel, so we can set the gray to be the B. Then G is going to be our roughness. And R is going to be our specular. So we'll set G to be our roughness, gray channel. And we're going to pick the specular from here to be our R. Hit our gray channel. And then we can go back to settings and hit save settings to save that preset. Go back into export textures. 
And now that we have our proper, um, our proper setup of exports, we're going to go ahead and select that template B4B. Uh, file type is going to be TGA, but that will already be based on the B4B default, so we don't need to set that. Our size is going to be 2048 because that's the size of the textures that we extracted. And we're going to have to give it an output directory. So let's put it in our exported shotgun directory. And we'll say tutorial textures. And we'll export them right here. Then we can go ahead and hit export. And now it looks like they've all exported properly. So we're going to go ahead and open up that directory and we can see that we have our new textures right here. If we open up our receiver, we can see that we have that nice grayish color with the scratches in it. And we're going to have to rename all of these to correspond to the textures that they're replacing. So we're going to name this like this, and I'm going to go ahead and do that for the rest of the files. So once we're done naming all of those, we're going to open up our Unreal project, and we're going to put those textures right back in the same textures folder we used in the previous tutorial. So we're just going to drag them all in, and we'll see they're all importing. And we'll hit Control S, and then hit Cook Content for Windows. And once your files are done cooking, you can head into the project in File Explorer, and we have our new textures for all of our um all of our materials so we're going to go ahead and take those and put them in our mod folder so into our shotgun mod we're going to oops we're going to copy all of them because in here we can replace the mod that we had before we're going to go all the way back up uh so if we were to build the mod right now the textures would all map properly but there's one thing that i discovered while building this tutorial previously which is the shotgun itself has a slight green glow to it and if we don't address this explicitly it's going to look pretty green like lime green so what we're going to have to do is again open our asset editor and we're going to have to open the material file for the default skin so that would be the barrel and we're going to pick fp so we can see here we have a bunch of values which um, we can find next to our exported shotgun so if we open skin sets skin default we can open the properties right here and we can actually see what all of these are so we have our scalar parameter which is refraction depth bias we have five texture parameter values which is all of those files and here is our emissive color so you can see right here we have our vector parameter which is our emissive color which has an emission of 0 red 0.25 green and 0.03 blue which means that it emits a color of green now normally you don't see this because the texture itself is formatted in such a way that the base color is untextured so the rest of the texture comes from the normals and the PBR. But what we have to do in this situation is we're going to manually decrease this emissive color. 
So we're going to go into this vector parameter value and we want to find the color, which is this value right here. And we're going to set this to be zero because we don't want our texture to be emissive at all. And we can go ahead and save that in our mod folder. So we're going to open where our shotgun mod is stored. We're going to head into shotgun mod. And we're going to put it in its corresponding location. So it's going to be here under skin sets. We can see skin sets under skin default. And we're going to put it right there. And we'll save it as its proper file name, which is weapon barrel dot u asset. Now we can hit save. You'll see this pop up it says file saved. And now we have this file here. So we can go ahead and close that. And now we have our mod completely finished. So what we're going to do is again open our Unreal Pack, drag this onto our Unreal Pack without compression. Now that we have our pack, we can go ahead and what I've done since last video is I've renamed our folder to start with underscore p so that when we pack it up, we won't have to rename it. And as well, I've written a Python script and a corresponding batch file to change the lines at the end of the file so we don't have to edit in HXD manual anymore. So I'm gonna leave these two linked in the description and we can just drag our pack onto this batch file and it will rewrite the pack for us so that now we can simply drag our shotgun mod back into our back for blood directory, replace the shotgun mod that's already there, and we'll go ahead and launch the game. So now our back for blood is running. We're gonna go ahead and play in offline mode and go check out our new shotgun in Fort Hope. So now we can see our nice new shotgun. We've got our shiny butt. We've got our mm, our receiver is not looking as nice and silver as I wanted to, but our barrel is nice and blue colored. So if we wanted to, we could go back and fix how some of the textures look so that they can look better in Unreal Engine itself. Of course, Back for Blood has some nice lighting oh, like this. Man. This lamp right here reflects nicely on the stock of the gun you can see right there, but not so much on the receiver. So we can change that if we, if we so desired. Um, but yeah, that's generally how you change textures in Back for Blood using Substance Painter. So we can get really cool looking effects like this stock with uh, proper reflections. And that's about it. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next tutorial.